In this video, we will continue our study related to primitive roots and indices and this is lecture 2 in this series. And in my earlier video, we have already defined what is the order of A modulo N. Let's recall here. Order of A modulo N is the power that is uh, given to A. So, A raised per K should be congruent to 1 modulo N. And of course, we are talking about for the numbers where the GCD of A and N is equal to 1. So, K is the least power satisfying this, uh, satisfying 1. And we have uh, taken an example in the last video and same I am quoting here also 2 to the power 3 is congruent to 1 modulo 7 and this 3 is the least so we say order of 2 is equal to 3. Of course this is modulo 7. So this is always re with respect to a particular modulo. Uh, when I say with respect to particular modulo because we can have again 2 has order 2 has order 4 modulo 5. 4 modulo 5. So, for different moduli, we may have a different order for a fixed integer. And also, whenever we say that this order is phi n, so that is what was the definition for primitive root. So, we say a is a primitive root of n if a raised to power phi of n is congruent to 1 modulo n and there exist no k this k should be of course a positive integer and k is strictly less than phi n such that a raised to power k is congruent to 1 modulo n so this means phi n is the smallest such powers that satisfy this type of the congress and in that case we have already seen that the gcd of a n n has always comes out to be 1 and otherwise this equation is not satisfied and in my earlier video, we have also discussed this question that how to reduce this computation time that it, that is needed for to calculate what is this k. So, for example, let us take an example here. Suppose we take n is equal to 13 and let me to take a is equal to 2. This means by Euler's theorem, by Euler's generalization, what we already know is that a raised to power phi of 13 is congruent to 1 modulo. 13 that means a raised to power 12 is always congruent to 1 modulo 13 but how do we ensure that there is no smaller power uh, to the power a that will satisfy this condition so in this case we have taken a is equal to 2 and we already know that the gcd of 2 and 13 is equal to 1 so i need to calculate 2 raised to power 1 2 square 2 cube and so on up till 2 raised to power 11 that means and i need to check to check a raised to power k is congruent to 1 modulo 13. So this this that me, so this means I need to check the congresses of all of these quantity. Now uh, we can reduce this computation time. So we can reduce we can reduce this calculation. And how do we reduce this calculation? So that is the first theorem to us. And let's see what is this uh, theorem says about and then we can continue the same example. So this theorem says let the integer a have order k modulo n. Then a raised to power h is congruent to 1 modulo n if and only if k divides h. And in particular if k divides phi n. This means rather than checking at all power of k. So let me to first explain the theorem before we go to the proof. We, we already know that a raised to power phi n is always congruent to 1 modulo n. So rather than checking at all k which are smaller than phi n, what we need to check, we need to only check for those k that divides phi n. So this is what this theorem speaks about. We only need to check for those k that divides phi n. So this means if I look back to my previous problem, here n is 13. So what is phi n? Phi n is 13 minus 1 because it is a prime number 12. So k should be k should be in the set which is a divisor of this 12. And what are the divisors of 12? Divisor of 12 are either it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. So if I if I look at this set, there were 11 numbers that I need to check in the Congress classes. Here there are only 6 numbers. Here in this set there are only 6 numbers. So this reduces my computation time. So I'll, I'll calculate now this quickly. 2 raised to power 1 is congruent to 2 modulo 13. 2 square is congruent to 4 modulo 13, 2 cube is congruent to 8 modulo 13, 2 raised to power 4 is congruent to 3 modulo 13 
and so all of them are modulo 13 that I'm writing and also 2 raised to the power 6 is congruent to 12 modulo 13 and 2 raised to the power 12 is congruent to 1 modulo 13. So this we already know that this quantity is already this and we have checked all other cases. Once we have checked all other cases and none of these cases is coming out to be congruent to 1 which is desired. So none of these are coming out to be 1. This is what is desired. So we say 2 has order 12 modulo 13 and hence we can say 2 is a primitive root of 13. 2 is a primitive root of 13. Okay. Now let us prove this theorem and because this theorem is uh, if and only if we see that there is a if and only if condition. So let me to prove this case. So we begin with we begin with k divides h and if k divides h this means h can be written as jk for some integer k for some integer j and the and also, it is written that A has order K and also AK is congruent to 1 modulo N. This is given to us. So, this implies if A raised to power K is congruent to 1. So, I will increase the power to both sides by J. So, this means modulo N. This implies A raised to power H is always going to come congruent to 1 modulo N. So, this means phi n is larger if we already know from here that a raised to power k is congruent to 1 modulo n. This implies a raised to power phi n is going to 1 modulo n if k divides phi n. That means if I can write phi n as k times some j. So, that proves that proves our this particular case also that k divides phi n. Conversely, conversely, let h be any positive integer. Let h be any positive integer satisfying a raised to power h is congruent to 1 modulo n. And now I want to prove this. So to prove k divides h. So on contrary we may take on contrary Suppose k does not divide h. If k does not divide h, then by division algorithm, there must be some remainder. By division algorithm, there is a remainder. So, let us write that remainder. h is q k plus r. So, by so we may say there exist q and r such that h is equal to q k plus r and the remainder can be 0 or it is strictly less than k. So, that is what we already know by division algorithm. And we see from here a raised to power h. This is equal to just simply replace the value for h that is qk plus r. This is equal to a raised to power k to the power q. And then we have a raised to power r. And what is given to us? Given to us is a raised to power h is congruent to 1 modulo n. This is already given to us. So the left hand side is congruent to 1. This means this whole side is also congruent to 1. And also we have been given that a raised to power k is congruent to 1 modulo n because the order of a is k. This quantity is congruent to 1. This quantity is congruent to 1. 1 raised to power k is 1. This implies, this implies a raised to power r is also congruent to 1 modulo n. But this, this will create a trouble for us because now, now, this is impossible this is impossible or it is a contradiction this is impossible it is a contradiction it is a contradiction because order of a is k and by the definition by definition k is smallest integer k is smallest integer, smallest positive integer satisfying satisfying a raised to power k is congruent to 1 modulo n. But we got, we got this which is star, we got this star and we know but we got 
but we got star and r is strictly less than k so this is a contradiction so this means it is not possible so hence k must divide h so this will reduce our computation time so we can see back our example now again if you want to calculate a permit if you want to calculate the order of a particular integer so once we calculate order we are also going to calculate primitive root in addition to that if the order is smaller than phi of the n then we conclude that it is not a primitive root and if the order is equal to phi of n then we are going to conclude that it is a primitive root.